rising to the setting sun. His love endures forever, and by the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong.
return in robes of white. The blazing sun shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. eternal life already and is for his praise once a month we take communion together as a congregation and leading us in this part of the service today is greg and stephanie madden can we show them some love i asked to speak to you guys today about communion because the lord has really grown us in the past year in this area most of you know i do vending machines for a living and I was in one of my locations filling the vending machines and it was in a break room and I heard a couple over in the corner ministering. And I always catches my eye when I hear that in a secular situation. So I start listening and this man asked the woman about communion and her answer broke my heart. She turns and she looks at the man and she says, as far as I can tell, communion is pretty much worthless. That is not my words. That is not the words of Generations Church of Granbury. This broke my heart. And I got into prayer over the last year, and the Lord has just grown and expounded us in this area. And uh, I couldn't believe that a self-proclaimed Christian actually felt that way about communion because communion is power. Amen? And uh, for me, communion has always been about that power of connection to Jesus. It's connection to the promises of God that Jesus died for. Amen? And uh, in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus tells his disciples in the upper room, he's holding the cup representing the blood. He says, drink from it. He's speaking to his disciples and to us in the New Testament church. Amen. Everybody understand that? He says, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So plain and simple right here in Matthew 26, Jesus is telling the apostles and us that because of his sacrifice, we can be forgiven of sin when we come to him and confess and repent. Amen? So he is showing us that communion is one way that we can come to him asking forgiveness as we do it in remembrance of him. We remember all that he's done for us, right? So look what Jesus says to his disciples in Matthew 26, 31, right after he makes a way to be forgiven. He shows them the last supper. And then a few verses later in 26, 31, Jesus says, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. 
For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. First, Jesus tells the disciples to drink the blood shed for remission of sin. Then he tells them through an Old Testament prophecy that they will be made to sin that night. What does that mean? He shows us that we can confess, repent, and reconnect to his promises through forgiveness. When we stumble, not if we stumble, but when we will stumble on occasion. The Bible says, let a man examine himself and then take of communion so as not to do it in an unworthy manner. Communion comes to us as a part of our forgiveness. As you know, communion is not a one and done, is it? It's available to us on this earth until the day that Jesus drinks it new with us in his Father's kingdom. Amen? Are we excited about that? Yes, Absolutely. Now, uh, as we prepare to take the blood, Stephanie is going to take us in Scripture to a time much closer to our eternal hope in Jesus. I want to read the words of John the Apostle as they were revealed to him by Jesus in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. John says, Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who were before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and forever. Amen. And let's get ready to partake together. Let's partake. You know, in that passage... Stephanie just read. It says that we've been made kings and priests to our God and Father by the blood of Jesus. Kings and priests. Isn't that amazing? How many of you out there feel like kings and priests? Well, we have the authority, the boldness that we can come to Jesus. That's how we connect to Jesus and receive the gifts and the promises that the Bible speaks of. His body was broken so ours doesn't have to be. Amen? That revelation connects us to Jesus through communion to our healing, and it takes us even deeper into blessing as the Lord leads by the will of the Spirit. Amen? Through communion. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. So what do we remember about Jesus? What do we remember about Jesus? Make it personal. You know, it's different for all of us, isn't it? As uh, Peter and others remember walking with Jesus in the flesh, we don't. So I can imagine Peter's memories of Jesus might be reaching down to pull Peter out as he was sinking in the sea. I think Peter would remember that, don't you? Maybe uh, after Peter betrayed Jesus, when Jesus forgave him, on the beach of the Sea of Tiberias. Maybe Peter remembers that, but what do you remember? You know, what do you remember about your relationship with Jesus that Jesus has done for you? We're different individuals. When we connect with Jesus through communion, we need to be real and we need to be personal. Yes, he died for mankind, but he also died for you and for you. Make it personal. For me, I remember that while I was still a sinner, he saved me. Amen. He sought after me even as I was still in my debauchery. He forgave me. I was led to forgiveness, imperfections, sins, and all. You know, I remember my dark lifestyle almost 20 years ago, being controlled by addiction, stubbornness, bondage of sin. And I remember the people that really cared about me trying to come to me and talk to me and of course in my sarcasm and uh, the way I lived back then I remember telling people I would say yeah no big deal I only drink if I'm by myself or with other people y'all ever heard that 
Well, you know, Jesus took me out of that and he loved me anyway, right? I haven't drank since 2006. So if you ask me today, if you ask me about Jesus, I'd say this. I only take communion and connect with Jesus if I'm by myself or with other people, right? We have communion available to us 24 seven. So as we get ready to take of his body, I want something on your mind. What has Jesus done for you? Just remember as we get ready to take this body, bring it to your remembrance. What has he done for you in your life? As we prepare to partake of the body, let's look at the words of Paul and of Jesus in 1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake. Thank you, Lord. Let's think about our connection to Jesus throughout this month, through communion. And uh, if you're with me and you just want to grow closer in this, stand up and give Jesus the loudest praise you ever have and let's praise him some more, guys. Addiction starts to break. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus.
Yes, Lord, we declare your name this morning. We declare it over every circumstance, Lord. We declare it over every doubt. We declare it over every broken heart. We declare it over every infirmity, Lord Jesus. We speak your holy and mighty name, Lord, because there is power in your name. And we ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would remind us that all throughout this week, that we can speak your name in every circumstance. And you are right there with us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus was given the name that was above every name. And every knee will bow. If you got two legs, they're both hitting the ground. And every tongue, that is every language, will confess that he is Lord. If you speak Hebrew, it will be Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the Messiah. If you speak Spanish, it's Jesus Cristo. Estel Señor. Jesus in English. Jesu in Swahili. The name that's above every name, and he responds in every language. He created the languages for his glory. He loves diversity, and he loves unity, and he brought us together under one banner, his name. His name is his contact info. It's his address. It's his number. It's his hashtag. It's everything is wrapped up. It's our prayer. Jesus, Jesus. whoever will call on the name of the Lord, I call on your name. Amen. Lord, we call on your name till every dark addiction starts to break. We call on your name when we face emergencies. We call on your name when we need reconciliation. We call on your name when we need wisdom. We call on your name when we need provision. Thank you, Lord, that Yahweh, Jehovah saves. Jesus, Yeshua, Joshua reigns and he saves. Hallelujah. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountain. Every stronghold, break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like your fire. The scriptures tell us to cast all our cares on him for he cares for us. So as a symbol of the things that concern you, just put your hands together and lift them up to him and call on his name. Jesus, I call on your name. This is what I'm concerned with. I leave them with you. Now, the word cast means to throw, so throw them. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Let's show some love to our team today. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.